Hello guys, I continue my weekly new tradition to talk about AI with Laravel on this channel and today we'll talk about the most annoying thing to me while using cursor when generating something with Laravel. Often it is generating files using the old structure of Laravel skeleton before Laravel 11 unless I instruct it not to do so and to use Laravel 11 structure. So I will show you what it generates without and with those instructions, also where to set those instructions. We will talk about cursor rules and how they changed their structure, by the way, in recent just weeks or months. And it was partially inspired by a tweet. A few weeks ago, Raphael suggested to create best cursor rules for Laravel. Later in this video, we will discuss whether those best rules actually exist and what should they be. But for now, let me demonstrate that in action. So here's a totally fresh new Laravel 12 project with Livewire starter kit, but starter kit doesn't matter. It was needed just to test the functionality. And here's the prompt that I will try. Create a listener to send a welcome email. And I know it should be a listener. And I know that there's an event in Illuminate Auth in Laravel. So it's not really a vibe coding prompt. I actually know what I'm doing a little, but I'm still trying to be vague, interested where it would register all of that. We send that to Claude and see what happens. So it's exploring the code structure, good. Now it's checking for the event service provider and this is before Laravel 11. In Laravel 11, it doesn't exist, okay? And it's creating that event service provider, although it's not really a recommended way in Laravel 11. You still can do that, but it's not really recommended. There's another way to register the listeners or in fact, register the provider. The listeners actually ought to listen to events if they are type hinted properly. Okay, so I've waited for it to finish altogether. So the result is this. It's kind of okay, it is working, but event service provider is a thing of the past in my opinion. But the main problem is not even in the service provider, but in the fact that cursor doesn't take into account that listener can be automatically listening to that event. So let's reject all and let's reprompt again. So same prompt, but we will also add instruction of two lines. Service providers that you should not create other service providers if they don't exist. And then listeners ought to listen for the events. Now let's see what happens. Generating and then it is following Laravel 11 conventions because I told it to. Still, it's browsing through the files and tries to understand the structure. So it's creating the email class, but now the main thing is where it would generate that. Email template, okay, fine, let's create that folder. So blade file created, next step, I'm intrigued. Creating a listener, correct. And now, yes, registered event is inside of the listener where it is listened to automatically. So as I mentioned in the instructions, no additional registration is needed in service providers. Great, exactly what I wanted it to do. And a few more prompt examples. I will not show the result, but we'll show the prompt. Create artisan command. So if I don't provide the Laravel 11 structure, it would register that in app console kernel file, which doesn't exist in Laravel 11 or 12 anymore. It will try to create it and register it, although now it is registered in routes console PHP. The commands are registered there. Another example, if I ask it to create a middleware, it would try to register it in app HTTP kernel file, which doesn't exist anymore since Laravel 11. Middlewares are registered in the bootstrap app now globally in the method with middleware. Similar with exceptions. If you want to process some exception or create your own exception, it will try to process that in the file app exceptions handler PHP, which doesn't exist anymore either. And that also should be registered in the bootstrap app file in the method with exceptions. And I keep repeating Laravel 11, although Laravel 12 is the newest version, but the structure didn't change. From 11 to 12, there's no big difference, but from 10 to 11, there's massive difference. And I was expecting Claude to automatically fall back to Laravel 11 newest version, but logically it was mostly trained on Laravel code with massive amount of code from previous versions. So probably it is the default behavior, unless again, we instruct it differently. So this is how you can instruct the agent with every query, with every prompt, but there is a thing called cursor rules. So if we go to cursor settings, there's rules and you can find project rules. And you can add multiple rules per project. For example, rules for Laravel, rules for Tailwind, rules for Livewire and stuff like that. So I add a new rule, call it Laravel 11. Then it generates the file in .cursor rules folder called Laravel 11.mdc. And then here 
In Markdown or in plain text, I add the set of rules which would be added to every prompt to the LLM. And here's my set of instructions for Laravel 11 from my experiments. The things that I've mentioned already with my examples and also I added Tailwind because a few times it generated Blade with Bootstrap by default. So then we save that file and then we choose whether to always apply it or only when requested. Let's leave it as always apply. Let's close those settings and let's repeat some prompt, for example, process exception. And let's see whether it will throw exceptions, process exceptions in app exceptions folder or in bootstrap app. See, I see that in Laravel 11, exception handling is configured this and that. So it takes into account all my instructions. This is the main thing. And here's the result. It touched only bootstrap app file, nothing else. Overriding the exception, in this case for API, I don't really even care about whether it's correct for now. My main point is that it wouldn't touch app exceptions folder from older Laravel version and it did the job correctly. So yeah, if you work with Laravel 11 and 12 versions and you prefer the new skeleton structure, I advise you to add that into cursor rules and I will paste my instructions that you've seen on the screen down below in the video description. And also important, cursor changed recently how you add those rules because it used to be a file called dot cursor rules. So if you scroll down in the documentation, there is a backward compatibility with dot cursor rules that look like this. So there is a website called cursor.directory and there are other websites and you can find on GitHub just general instructions like this for those who work with Laravel projects like use solid principles, used best practices, used PHP version this and that. So that used to be kind of the standard. Another example from GitHub, there's awesome cursor rules, GitHub repository. And here you can instruct the general thing about what to use or what not to use in your projects. But in my opinion, this thing is pretty vague. So solid principles and object-oriented programming. At this point, Cursor and Claude are smart enough to actually do that by default. So I would suggest in your Cursor rules, you be more precise, more specific about your preference. If there's a choice to be made where to register files, how to write the structure, for example, use service or action classes, use PEST or PHP unit, use form requests or validation in the controllers. So basically things where they really are debatable. But based on those rules that I found online, I've created cursor rules generator. I've played around, I actually vibe coded this thing with Laravel and Livewire, where I took one of those cursor rules, actually a few of them combined into what I think is actually important. For example, use Laravel helpers, follow directory structure, and some of those things are with variables, which are changeable here on the left. For example, you can choose PHP version you're working with, or you can choose none, and then it wouldn't specify a PHP version. Then you can choose Laravel version. For example, you can say Laravel 12. For code styling, you may choose Laravel pint. For action or service, you may choose to generate actions. It's here at the bottom. Also, as I mentioned, which testing framework to use, PEST or PHP unit. There's also a dropdown for that. And then whenever you're ready, you can copy that to clipboard or download the file. So this is the thing that I've created basically in an hour or so. So this is down below created by Laravel Daily and Cursor in basically three to five prompts to Claude LLM. Actually, what took the longest was to find the actual text what should be inside by default and what should be the variables. And I've put this code on GitHub for us to discuss whether you want me to proceed with more functionality, with more parameters or what they should be in general, how you use cursor rules and what would you suggest. So the repository is public on GitHub and I will link that in the description below. But just for the interest, we can browse through App Livewire cursor rules, what it generated for me. So the default values for properties for Livewire. And then whenever something changes, updated PHP version, update rules text. Whatever happens, update rules text. And then the text is taken from blade file. It may be not blade, it may be markdown. And then replacement of the variables. And then some string operations. And that's it. Then Livewire takes care of everything else. So yeah, I'm not really sure. I would personally not use that set of big rules. I would prefer 
more precise one, as I mentioned in the rest of this video. But what do you think in general? What rules do you use? Or if none, then what rules should we combine? And maybe I will publish them as a certain set of rules or as a cursor rules generator to be flexible. But the general message of this video was that if you don't specify the instructions for AI LLM, they may default to generate the code with older versions of Laravel, PHP, or actually whatever framework you use. So be more specific, whether in the prompt or in a global rule set. What other topics about AI with Laravel you want to hear about on this channel? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.